It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hi there, this is You Don't Know Jack, and I'm Schmitty, and I am here all for you, just for you, because apparently you couldn't find anybody else to hang out with. Hey, I'd appreciate it if you didn't go blabbing to everybody that we hung out today. I've got a reputation to uphold. One. This category is, I can't see him, but he's still my little friend. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Hey, I gotta be honest with you, trying to narrow stuff down for this Things You Can't See episode wasn't easy. Hope you appreciate it, you ungrateful bastard. Okay, squeeze in nice and close and tell me if you can see this. You have an imaginary friend named No see -um. How much you play together? You wear a magic ring, he tries to kill you. You go hiking, he bites you. You plant a garden, he grows uninvited. Or you build a teepee, he signs a bad faith treaty. Signs a bad faith treaty from the U.S. government? <laughs> what makes you think your friend is imaginary? Here's the one the winners pick. No see are these little tiny biting flies. You know, it's a rare friendship when you can say bite me and still stay close. The category's gonna be, is that Luxembourg or just a mustard stain? You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Here's the question. Suppose you have trouble seeing Micronesia on a map. Which of these is the closest landmass that you could locate with your magnifying glass? Japan, Greenland, Great Britain, or Australia? Japan. See, now, this is one of those no see -um answers. You're not paying attention, and then it sneaks up and bites you right in the ass. So you don't lose any sleep over it. Micronesia is a group of islands, including my close personal friend Guam, that can be found nor uh, up and to the right of Australia. Its inhabitants take pictures with microfilm, and they call each other on the microphone. When they get out of the shower, they wear microbes, and in high school they studied, that's right, microbiology. <laughs> I'm calling this one, watch your butt. You get it right, you get 2K. All right, give me your best shot. If somebody has been goosing the ladies with an invisible hand, who's got a bad case of the pinchy fingers? Alan Greenspan, Friedrich Engels, Adam Smith, or John Maynard Keynes? Why do you do that to yourself? Well, that'll make an exciting story, won't it? Jot this down. Economist Adam Smith's invisible hand theory proposes that individuals in a capitalist society act in self-interest but to the benefit of the society as a whole. Just as a horny old economist who's pinching butts is acting for the greater good of all the other butts that he isn't pinching. See? Get ready, because you're gonna play a When Did Happen. All right, I'm going to show you an event, like this. Then I'm going to list off seven other events, like this one. All you got to do for each one is tell me whether it happened before or after man first walked on the moon, or if it never happened at all. Buzz in when the correct answer is lit, you'll get $1,000. But be careful, if you buzz in when the incorrect answer is lit, you lose 1000 Each time you're wrong. All right, let's get this party rolling. The category for this when it happened is, which one's the fat guy? Hey, you know who else had an invisible hand? The Invisible Man. Come on, that was an easy one. You remember him, don't you? If you don't, maybe you'll remember when this film came out. Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man. Tell you what, I'm going to read off seven of their films, and for each one, you tell me if it came before Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man, after they met the Invisible Man, or, you know, if it never came out at all. Oh, that was a lot of fun, huh? 
huh? Let's see what happens. Not bad. Not exactly stellar. Let's see what that does for you. Well, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed that. Shall we get back to the game? Bye. This one's called, He's Got a Thing That's Called Radar Love. $1,000 at stake on this one. Okay, do you remember Radar O'Reilly, the guy with the teddy bear from the TV show MASH and the movie? Well, say Radar O'Reilly actually has radar. Which of these things would be the most difficult for him to detect? A hang glider, a stealth bomber, a scud missile, or a flock of geese? <laughs> The shape and material of the stealth bomber makes it really difficult to detect by radar. Just like the shape and material of Radar O'Reilly made it very difficult for him to attract the ladies. Six. Coming at you. War is easy. Comedy is hell. How does $2,000 sound? Hey, do you remember the unknown comic? You know, that guy in the gong show whose face we never saw because it was covered by a paper bag? Imagine that after he dies, he's buried in the tomb of the unknown soldier. If the unknown comic were interred there, how many unknown bodies would then be buried at Arlington National Cemetery? One, two, three, or four? Oh, was that too tough for you? Here, let me give you another try. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? <coughs> uh, does this ring a bell? <coughs> Currently, there are three soldiers buried there. One from World War I, World War II, and Korea. The soldier from Vietnam was identified, and hopefully no one's planning on replacing him. So, adding the unknown comic would make four. You know, it's too bad they didn't have plastic grocery bags when the unknown comic was popular. Sticking one of those over his head would have been the most entertaining thing he ever did. <coughs> Seven. Up next, a real man stares at the sun. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Okay, so you know how Manfred Mann's Earth Band sings a well-known cover of Bruce Springsteen's Blinded by the Light, right? Well, what the hell is Manfred Mann's Earth Band trying to sing? Revved up like a deuce, wrapped up like a douche, ripped up like Medusa, or cut up like a goose? Yeah, wrapped up like a douche, and then tossed in the garbage bin. Hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. What Mr. Man and the boys are trying to say is, revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night. And if you think that's bad, you ought to hear their cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit. Eight. Here's a little something I call, nude is artistic. Naked is just frightening. I got $2,000 says you don't know this one. Apparently the 80s band Naked Eyes is no longer visible to the naked eye. I mean, I haven't seen them in years, and I was a big fan. Considering the title of Naked Eyes' big hit, which of these would make the best epitaph? Goodbye, cruel world. Another band bites the dust. Don't shed a tear for us, or always something there to remind you. Naked Eye's big fat 80s hit was always something there to remind me. Yeah, you know, there always will be something there to remind me. It's called Muzak. Okay, stretch yourself out and get psyched because this one's a dis or dat. The category for this dis or dat question is size doesn't matter as long as you can see it, right? All right, now I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one I want you to tell me if it shrinks or turns invisible. As you see each one, if it becomes little teeny tiny, press your square button. If it turns invisible, well, press the circle button, and hit the triangle button to skip it. I'll give you $1,000 for each right answer, but it's 1000 off your score for each one you miss or don't get to. Okay, can I get 30 seconds on the clock? So, let's do it. Perseus, does he shrink or turn invisible? Ant Man! Alice in Wonderland! Bilbo Baggins! The Cheshire Cat! The uh, Limbo Girl! Last one! A few in cold water! Simply put, you rock! Check this out! Yeah, that was great. What are you going to buy? Let's get back to the game. Ten. 
The category is the Battle of the Bulges. $3,000 for this one. Hey, do you know those little thongs that guys wear? You know, some people call them banana smugglers because, you know, they do. They look like, uh, <laughs> come on, you know what I mean. Say the title character from the Scarlet Pimpernel wore a thong. Based on the nationality of the people he smuggled to safety, what might jeering kids call his thong? Dutch apple pie smuggler, french fry smuggler, Greek salad smuggler, or Swedish meatball smuggler? <laughs> Swedish meatballs? Oh, and that thing there must be the toothpick. Okay, now here's a good answer. The Scarlet Pimpernel is the story of a disguised British noble who rescues French aristocrats during the revolution. French fry smuggler. Like me to supersize that for you? Eleven. This category is dead time stories. I'm gonna give away 3,000 bucks this time. Okay, listen up. It's story time. Once upon a time, there was this guy, right? And he had this, um, like, ingrown toenail, right? I mean, it was killing him, but he refused to go to a doctor because he thought he could take care of it himself, right? So he went at it with this butter knife and a fork. He tried prying back his skin so he could dig out the infected nail, but the pain was just too severe, right? So he decided to get so drunk he wouldn't feel the pain. Only that screwed up his motor skills, so he was digging in the wrong place place. Finally, the throbbing got so bad he just hacked off the toe with a steak knife and bled to death in his bathroom. What was this guy's problem? He couldn't see the forest for the trees. He locked the stable after his horse left. He saw the world through rose-colored glasses, or it was like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> Focus on the little things so much that you lose track of the big picture, that's when you can't see the forest for the trees. But I think the real lesson here is, don't pick at your toes with a fork. The category's gonna be one old dick. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, you know what I don't understand? Everybody's always going on and on about Dick Clark's age. The guy hangs out with Ed McMahon. Who's not going to look young? Ugh, anyway. What aspect of Dick Quark might people prattle on about? His distance from the Earth, his location in the brain, his subatomic size, or his extra digit? Quarks are teeny, tiny, itty-bitty, little, very small subatomic particles of matter. Some of them, in fact, used to hang out with Dick Clark when they were all kids. I'm calling this one. If you were a window, I could see through you. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Put it in gear, because here we go. Say you're watching TV and the cones in your retina stop working. Considering how this would impair your vision, what might you say if you call up your local cable operator for help? I can't see, must see TV. HBO is upside down. I want my MTV in 3D. Or take me to color TV land. Since the cones in your retina allow you to see colors, losing them would leave you in a black and white world. But unfortunately, the cable guy won't be able to help you. He can't do anything about your astigmatism either, so don't ask. This one's called, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. You give me a right answer, I'll give you 3,000 bucks. Um... Okay, I'm just going to come out and ask this. Have you ever heard that masturbating can make you go blind? Me neither. But it brings up a good question. And, uh, here it is. So just go ahead and buzz in when you got it. No way! Some tribes tie a weight on the end of theirs to elongate them. Some even have to tie a knot in it to keep it from dragging. Should've picked this one. According to the medical profession, chronic masturbation will not make you go blind. However, pressing your nose against the TV trying to tune in the after-hours pay-per-view channels at 3 in the morning may cause eye strain.
Welcome to the Jack Attack. When you see two words on the screen that match, hit your buzzer. If you're right, I'll give you 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, you're going down 2,000. But don't forget, remember the clue. Not any old word's gonna do it. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. I don't know what you see in her. Just remember, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, I'd like to hold her. Was that out loud? because I wouldn't have played by myself. I would have found something else to do, you know? Now, but seriously, player one, and uh, this isn't easy for me to say. I remember when Karen had just given birth to Emily. She was our third baby in four years, and I knew the responsibility was going to be immense. That's when I decided to visit National American Bank and Trust. I had problems, and they offered solutions. You see, my friend Larry works there as a janitor, and he loaned me 50 bucks so I could buy a one-way bus ticket to Daytona and get a fake driver's license. Suddenly, my responsibilities vanished, and I was able to go back to visiting strip clubs. Thanks, National American. Hi, I'm Patrick L. Bender, children's attorney at law. Do the other kids hate you? Do they pick you last in gym? Do they call you fatty, fatty, hamburger patty? Let's be honest, kids can be cruel. But thanks to new legal loopholes, you don't have to take it anymore. Just listen to one of my clients. Yeah, do you want to trade your bologna for my tuna? So I said her good. I'll help you stand up for your rights with teachers, too. Mrs. Green was always calling on me in class, and I took her to court, and she was crying, and now she doesn't come to school anymore. Call me, Patrick L. Bender, at 555-KIDS for a free estimate. That's 555-K-I-D-S. Remember, even though you can't spell litigious, you can still take the law into your own grubby little hands. Derek Carling was a modern-day prodigy, adding flavor to a bland world. Derek was able to hear a song just once and then hum it all day. He wouldn't even realize he was doing it. It was like he brought this invisible happiness to our home. I don't like any kind of music. Classical, rock, jazz, you name it, I don't like it. But Derek, somehow he made it all sound pleasant. In a background music industry that demanded ubiquitous instrumental medleys, Derek Carling found success immediately. Derek was a genius. I mean, uh, no one can make shoppers shop longer. Our workers work harder. At his height, you couldn't go anywhere without subconsciously hearing Derek's stuff. Oh, he had groupies. Until... Until Derek's ego drove him into a nightmarish descent filled with booze and drugs. He went from audio architect to audio autocrat in about the blink of an eye. He crashed and burned good. Tonight, Derek Carling's 15 minutes of inharmonious infamy on Behind the Muzak. Hi, I'm Steele Dakota, president of the National Gun Association, and I'm here to tell you about yet another reason why you need to protect your right to bear arms. Consider this all-too-familiar scenario. 
Come here, Fluffy. Yeah, nice kitty. You're a good kitty cat. Hey, wait, Fluffy. Where, where'd you get that AK-47? Huh? Hey, hey, don't be crazy. Hey, hey, put that down. Wait. <laughs> Whether it's a dangerous home invader or a heavily armed house cat, America, protect your rights and protect yourself. Mr. Johnson's magic powder will make you invisible. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. <laughs> All right, look in the mirror. It uh doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but close your eyes now. <gasps> oh my God, it's a miracle. I can't see myself. This stuff really works. Mr. Johnson's magic powder. This stuff really works. Who is that? Where's that voice coming from? A little help here? Ah. <laughs>